The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello and welcome everybody uh, to today. Welcome to uh, this month's session of uh, XLBI virtual chapter, or virtual group, sorry. My name is Johan and I'll be your moderator for today. Um, before uh, I'll hand the screen over to Prathi, uh, I have some short slides for the past community news. So first of all, um, next week, Tuesday and Wednesday, uh, you will have uh, 24 hours of pass uh, with a focus on security. And it will be uh, 24 hours of expert training delivered by to the comfort of your home or office. Uh, and if you go into uh, pass.org uh, and uh, see on the front page, you will see uh, a link to the 24 hours of pass where you can register. And then, if you're in the US on uh, June the 21st, there's a business analytics day. We had one in January, that was a huge success, so we're following up this now. That's in Atlanta. And uh, you can register on passbaday.com. And of course, this is a virtual group. There are virtual groups for about uh, anything you want to uh, learn about. You have anything from application development, which is brand new, to uh, PowerShell and uh, Women in Technology and uh, Global Arabic. So uh, have a look on uh, Pass.org at the virtual group pages to see if there is anything that fits you and uh, register for uh, lots of free training. There's always uh, recorded sessions as well on uh, uh, each and every virtual group's page. You can have a link to their YouTube channel. Uh, and on that note, this uh, recording, or sorry, this session will also be recorded. And since we're in the end of the month, there is only three more uh, uh, SQL Saturdays coming up. That's in Rochester and uh, Calgary in the North uh, America. And then you have uh, Costa Rica and uh, Latham. So if you're anywhere near those, why not sign up for a free day of uh, SQL training? And remember, sign up for a free membership today at PASS.org and connect with us on Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn. So with that, I'll hand it over to Prathi. Cool, thank you. So let me start my slides. Uh, just interrupting while you're starting. Uh, remember that uh, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, uh, ask them in the questions panel uh, and uh, we'll gather them up at the end. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Thanks for the intro and thank you for joining us. So today, we are looking at Power BI dashboard in an hour. So this session is mostly Excel users oriented. So this is a beginner session. It's for some, someone who has been using Excel for years and uh, the people or like who has been using Excel for years and someone at your work said there is this new tool which is very cool or you went to a conference or read a blog post or read a tweet about Power BI. And if you want to understand more about this tool, so that's what we are targeting in this session. So that's a brief intro about the session. So before we dive into the session, first thing first, a bit about me. I'm Prati, I'm Prati Kamasani. I'm a London-based Microsoft BI contractor. I'm also an MVP. I organize London Power BI user group in London. So if you fancy some Power BI and some pizza in London, then yeah, you can find us on Meetup or on Twitter at pug underscore London. Or you can also find us on the official Power BI user groups web page. And if you have any questions related to this session or in general, if you want to be in touch, those are my contact details over there. So let's see what we have in today's agenda. So today we will look at how to extract or say, let's say, get data from various data sources in Power BI. And then we see how we can quickly transform the data. So this extract or get and transform data in is it's like a, it's same as a new version of 
new versions in Excel like in 2016. Or if you if you talk about like if you're familiar with Power Query, this is exactly similar, pretty much same. Then we see how we can analyze the data in Power BI. Again, this is not at all new for Excel users who are already familiar with Power Pivot. So the trans the analyzing when you when we're talking about models or when we're talking about DAX, they're pretty much similar to Power Pivot. And finally, we will see how we can create stunning visuals with power with few simple clicks, and also see how to create fascinating dashboards and how to share them. So by considering time, we will look in we will look into sharing. If we have enough time, we will we will share we will look into the sharing. So as we challenged ourselves to do all this in an hour, so let's get started. So for today, I'm going to pretend that I'm working for an organization called Random Stats. So basically, this organization is nothing but they do all kind of random stuff. So my boss come to my desk and he asked me, hey Prati, within a few hours, I need you to create these dashboards from me. So one is based on the UK schools and their ratings data. So basically what he want is something like a total list of schools by local authority on how many pupils are there in each school or how many outstanding schools are there. So basically how many good rating, really nice rating schools. And the, I want to slice and dice the data by local authority or if the, if the schools are, already have address. So I want to visualize those schools information on a map and then slice and dice or something, things like that. And also, he says, OSCOS information. So there is nothing, no relationship between these two data sets, but this is, this is like another data set, another dashboard that he wants. So for the OSCOS information, so he wants like a, all the best movie nominations from all the Academy Awards, like from 51st to, to current one or also who won in 2013 or 1918. So that's just an example. So on, on certain precise year, we want to know exactly who won for that best, best movie and who won in 2016 and movie length, how long, what was the runtime of the movie. So you remember this is a random stats organization, so that's why they want all this kind of random stuff. And then he also says, by the way, we don't have any data in-house. So at the moment we don't have any UK schools data in-house in the organization where I'm working, neither the OSCOS information. So that's when I was thinking like within a few hours you want me to create this two data dashboards and with no data available and pretty much I don't actually know the exact questions that I want to answer as well. So basically I want to create dashboards without knowing what the questions are, just use my own ideas. So that's kind of situation where I am. And then he also says, oh, by the way, there is this Miss Awesome said, you can create these reports very easily in Power BI. So before we see how I, I can give answers to these questions, the questions I actually don't know, but before we do that, let's see what actually Power BI, Power BI is capable of. What, what is that Power BI can actually simplify for us so that I can create those dashboards within a few hours. So by I'm saying few hours because I cheated a bit because I, down, I already downloaded the data sets and things like that. That's why I'm saying few hours. So, so what is Power BI? So Power BI is suite of business analytical tools. So this, if we use this, this one to to get, trans, to get the data, to transform the data, we analyze and visualize. So we use this suite of analytical tools inside the Power BI to do all this information. And this is not at all new for any Excel users because literally I was talking to one of my colleagues at work yesterday and he came to my desk asking, oh Prati, I heard you're doing some visualizations, can you show that to me? That, that was the first time he actually saw Power BI. And then in the, main, in the beginning when he saw it, he says, oh no, it's actually pretty nice. I don't want somebody to come and replace my job. And then after spending a few minutes with that, then he understand how easily, how, sim how quickly we can do things and how easily it simplifies his day-to-day -day job. So the reports he's working on for like a, ten, a week, now he can actually deliver those in, in a day. So 
it, it explains how easily we can do that. But when we are saying it is pretty similar to Power Pivot, Power View, Power Map, and Power Query. So these are just predecessors of the Power BI. So why actually Microsoft created a Power BI instead of having those different plugins in Excel is because, first of all, Power BI is free and they have monthly release cycle. So with Excel, to maintain the monthly release cycle with Excel is quite difficult. But having its own application like Power BI makes it very easy. So having monthly release is, is very useful because if there is something, there is one functionality that you that is missing in the Power BI at the moment. If you create, you can create an idea on the Power BI portal. It has an idea site, a website, and that's where you can create the ideas. And if you get enough words, Power BI will immediately start working on, on that that idea. So this monthly release cycle enables you to have the different functionalities, different cool stuff adding into the application quickly. So I'm not saying it's not like a Excel is slow or anything, but it's just a div and Excel is, is a big enterprise organization and um, so they can't probably release the in the same release cycle. So that's it. That's those are the slides I have so I have so I don't actually like to have too many slides when I'm doing webinar. So let's see what is Power BI, where we can download it, how it looks like and things like that. So Power BI, to get Power BI thing to have to actually access it you can go to powerbi.microsoft.com and once you go there you can you can click on the sign up free so if you want to sign in for Power BI you can click on that once you click on that sign up for free it opens up there are two versions of Power BI not versions are two types of Power BI so one is Power BI desktop for Windows and one is Power BI SaaS service so Power BI Desktop for Windows means it installs an application on your laptop. And the Power BI web portal or Power BI SaaS service, this is a cloud system. So if you, if you are in an organization where cloud is not supported, then you can go for Power BI Desktop for Windows. And this is just like a, having Excel. You can share Power BI Desktop files and you can have different things. And Power BI service, it, it enables so many some more functionalities which Power BI Desktop uh, doesn't allow. And it has amazing and sharing functionalities and um, the q and functionalities and the dashboards, the other things. So today, we're going to mostly focus on Power BI Desktop for Windows, but we will look into Power BI SaaS service or the web portal. But that's more to design the dashboards and to how to share the dashboards and how to use the Q&A functionality. Apart from that, we're not going to do much more in that. So Power BI Desktop. So once you click on this download button, it installs, well, it downloads the installation and within a few clicks, you can install. It's, it's really easy installation. So let's look at the, what happens, how it looks like. So once you download the Power BI, once you install the Power BI desktop onto your PC, this is this is how, once you open it, this is how it looks like. So this opens up this window in the beginning, and this window is nothing but, if you want to extract the data, you can click on this get data, or if you have recent sources, you can click on the recent sources, and some information about the Power BI, some videos, and if you have any recent uh, PBX files, Power BI models, they will appear here. So if you want to extract data, you can click on the get data, opens up this window where you have several data sources available. So we know, I will get, I will come back to this get data window in a bit. But before that, I want to show you some, there are four components in the Power BI desktop which are very important. So let's open one of the model I already have. So or probably I could say six components which are quite useful. So the first thing first, which is the query editor. So when you once you connect your data, once you, or once you click on this edit queries, this opens the query editor. So this is where you will have all your queries. So if you if you are extracting, if you are getting data from some certain source, this is where you have. So when you want to, this is one query I already have. But if you want to add a new query, I can go for new query and add new queries. So this is a query editor, and this is this is one component which is useful in the Power BI desktop. 
The next one is the relationships. So relationships is where once you once you add the query into your Power BI desktop, or once you add your data source into Power BI desktop, once you import the data into the model, this is where it appears. So this is a, this is the query you saw in the query editor. If you have more than one query, you will have or more than one data sources, you will see all those in this window. And you can create relationship between these the, the, these queries. If there is any relationship, then you can cre create relationship just by dragging and dropping the relationship. So there are different type of relationships available, like one-to-one, -one, many to many, one to many, and different type of relationships which are available in here. The next one is the data window. So data window is if you have based on your data sources. So for example, schools is my data source, so schools is my query. So when I click on this, it shows me all the data available in that in that query and all the columns and everything. So this window is very useful because this is the window which helps you to analyze your data. If you are creating new measures and if you want to do different things, so you want to look at your data while you're creating your reports, this is, this is the window which comes very handy when you want to look at your data and then comes to the report. So this is like a blank canvas where you design your reports. And so And you can create a different tabs, like a, you can click on this plus symbol to create different new pages, to add new pages to your report. And those are four important components, but again there are two more which are like a visualizer, visualization span and field span. So in, under we Fields pane. This is where you see all your data sources or queries and their fields or columns in in there. And then the visualizations in the visualization span. That's where you see all the visualizations in the Power BI desktop. So some visualizations which come inbuilt, and some of them are custom visualizations that you can import, which we will come. I'll talk about that in a bit. And then you have the you have the fields window and the format option. And based on the visualizations, you'll have that explorer and other, other things available. So this is, a, this is how Power BI desktop looks like. And these are the main components that's important. So the other thing is the Power BI web portal, which is this one. And so once you, over here, once you sign up, so you can sign up for free. There is a free version and a pro version. So even Power BI Desktop for Windows and the Power BI Free Service, the both are obviously free. If you want to go for Pro version, you can go for Pro version, and Pro version have this more functionalities like a direct query, and there are many other uh, functionalities Pro version enables. But if you if you don't want to use the Pro version, then you can always go for the free version. If so if you're somebody who wants to learn or who wants to play then you can go for the free version or you can go for the trial pro version to explore the pro functionalities. So let's look at the web portal of the Power BI. So this is how the web portal of Power BI looks like. So as I said, I'm not going to talk much about it, but just to give an overview what, how it looks like. But the thing which are important here is you can download Power BI desktop and the, some other components which are related to the web portal like data gateway or if you want to go for Power BI for mobile and if you want Power BI publisher for Excel. So this is these two are quite useful for Excel users because you can use Power BI publisher for Excel so you can publish reports from Excel and also analyze Excel in, Excel in Excel. So you can view the data and you can analyze in your Excel. So we're not going to look much into those because our main target is to create the dashboards. So based on your workspaces, you will see your, your workspaces and you have favorites, recents, and shared. And you can also get data in the web portal as well. So when you click on this get data, this is where you can, you can see how to get data. And there is one functionality which is only available in the web, in the web version, the portal is the content packs. And and if you want to import or connect to the data, these are different ways you get to it. So let's look into Power BI Desktop and see how we can extract data into Power BI Desktop. So, so to fulfill my kind, the kind request from my boss, so obviously there is no data available in my, in my organization or the company where I was 
where I'm working. So what I had to do is I need to look for open data. And I asked my very good friend, my very good friend Google, uh, to give me the Oxford data. And I should have that window open. There you go. So when I Googled about uh, Oxford breakings, I found this statistical data set provided by Gov UK. And uh, this has the all the day all the open data related to the Oxford schools rating. And this is the file I downloaded. So I downloaded this CSV and now I, I want to import that CSV into my Power BI desktop. So this is now let's see how we can import the data into Power BI desktop or get data into Power BI desktop in Excel terminology or even in Power BI terminology. So to get data, so there are different ways you can do it. You can straight away go to edit queries and add, add a query or you can click on this get data this opens up this get data window. So let's have a quick look at data sources. What are different data sources we have? So we have, we have our traditional Excel and CSV. We have XML and JSON. But if you have a bunch of Excel files or CSV files in a, in a folder, you can even go for the folder structure. So what it does is it imports all the files in the folder and it brings back them to the Power BI. And if they all are in the same format, then you can nicely append them and you can quite easily input all the, all the data into Power BI very quickly. And you can also have, you have SQL Server database, you can have SQL Server Analysis Services database, you can use SQL Server Analysis Services database. So with SQL Server database and SQL Server Analysis stat, Services database, you can use direct query or library options. And there are so many other data sources available. You can connect to so many Azure, Azure databases and things like like different, like agenda or web. Web is something that we are going to look in a bit more in detail now. And Active Directory or Data Fair, or even if you if you are into R, you can do R. So, but just to make it simple, we are just going to use CSV so that we can understand the functionality very well. So I use CSV and I connect. So once I connect to the CSV, I go to downloads, Excel path. And this is the file I downloaded. So I click on that one, the file I want to import into the Power BI and open. So it connects to the CSV and this opens up this window. So what it, what it says, Power BI quite cleverly already recognizes the file origin based on the first 200 rows, it, det it detects the data type, but if I want, I can change it. It automatically detects the delimiter and it imports the data. So this is a preview of the data. So, but by just by looking at the data, or actually, if I'm happy with this data set, I can straight away load the data into my Power BI model. But by looking at the preview, I can see I've got like an extra row here and I don't have the right column names because my column names are in like a row two. So I want to edit this data set or I want to transform this data set before I load it into a Power BI desktop or like a, to the model. So let's edit. So by clicking edit, this opens up the query editor, which we saw before. So in the query editor, as you can see, it, it automatically it imported all the data and I can, I can see all the column names. Well, I don't have the proper column names, but I can see all the data which is available. So again, this is like a preview. It's not, it doesn't import all the data. So for example, if you click here, you can see limit of thousand values reached. So it's not like all the data set. But what is, what is available in the query editor? So this query editor is, again, it's not new. It's very similar to the public query and the get transform. So as you can see, they have, I have different, different options available in the, in the home, home tab. Like um, I can do, I can keep rows or remove errors. I can change the data type. I can, I can do the group by, I can split columns. If I want, I can merge with different queries or if I want, I can append queries. And under transform, I have many more functionalities available. So with just a single click, I can do all this. So, but just by looking here, I can see, I could probably get rid of this row by, by using use posterize header. 
So I just I just I click on this use for stress header and it moved my first row to header. And obviously that is that's not my header. So I use I click on that step again and it adds the header. And every single step I do, it apply those steps here and we can visualize those steps. For example, you can click if you if you don't want you can just you can undo the steps. You can you can do that, and um, yeah, because obviously I want that. And I'm going to redo the step. So that's how I can do. And then it's not only limited to that. I, there are so many other things that I can do. For example, if I look at this data set, it has so much data probably which I don't need. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the columns. So if I want to remove the column, for example, if I want to remove web link, I can just right click and remove. But I don't want to remove the web link, so let me go back. But there are columns. There are actually many columns that I don't want than the columns I want. So I would just choose the columns I need. So I just hold my control and choose the columns I need. So I'm not interested in admission policy. I'm interested in Austin region, region, local authority, constituency. Obviously, postcode because my boss wanted to view on the map. Total pupils. And obviously, the most important overall effectiveness. So that is the column which is which holds the rating information. And apart from this, I want to remove all other columns. There you go. So now it's removed all the columns that I don't want and I have the only columns I need. So now, if I want, I can change the data type. For example, I know total people's account. So I can click on that. I can either change the data type by choosing the data type from here, or based on the data type, I can ask Power BI to choose the data type. Whenever we change the data type, we can see the little symbol which explains the kind of data type it is. So one to three is like a number. So when we look at the overall effectiveness, so overall effectiveness is the column which holds the Rating. For example, if the value is 1, that means outstanding, if value is 2, it's good, and if it is 3, it's inadequate or something. So, obviously, oh, I already forgot what the what 1, 2, 3 means, so I need the description for that one. So, for this, I can add new columns. So, what I'm going to do is I'll go to add column, and I can add columns in different ways. So, this is a new one. I can add columns based on the example. So, for example, if I choose par parliamentary constituency, column from example, from selection. So, this is just to show you what it is. So, if I click on cities, um, choose, it automatically added the expression by adding the text before delimiter. But if I, if I want to make some change of, so now, as you can see, it automatically added cities of, uh, so it's changed the before delimiter. And if I just make it a bit more, so it works sometimes, and sometimes it doesn't work. So, for example, because it this doesn't has off, that's why it's not working. But if you if you have the data. Uh, like exactly based because we are saying based on this example. So if you give the value exactly what you are after, then it works perfectly fine. But obviously we don't need this, so I click on the cancel. So but what based on the overall effectiveness, what we need is we need a conditional column. So I can just go to conditional column. What it does is I can choose the column like overall effectiveness. If the operator value is one, it's Outstanding overall effectiveness equals to good three in something that needs to implement. And if the value is four. And it's great. 
So, and the rest, I'm leaving them as blank. Okay. So there you go, it automatically added the, well not automatically, it added the column, a conditional column based on the overall effectiveness. And if I want to rename this column, I can rename this column just by going to rename and change it to rating. So there you go. So for each step, for each changes you're making is actually, if you want to see the code behind it, it's it's the odd, it's, M language so you can go to view and you can see advanced editor so when we do the conditional column what it basically did is it's it added if condition multiple ifs and based on this value if it is not that and for everything you do it adds a step and you can you can see that steps over here and so this is this is the M language that uses behind the get a transform or power query so now I'm happy with my data set. I have all the data items that I wanted. I wanted. So once I'm happy with my data set, I can just click on file and close and apply. Because I, I already have the data set here, which is exactly same apart from I already did it. So I'm going to, I'm going, I can delete this one because it's just a duplication. So if I want to rename, I can right click and rename. Or if I want to delete, obviously, I can right-click again and delete. So I'm going to delete the data, the data set, close and apply. So once I, once I apply the query, it imports, uh, it gets the data into the model. This is where you can see the, the query. And if, as I said before, if I have more queries, I can create the relationship if I need it to. And if I want to see the data, this is where I can see my data. So by looking at the data, I can see I've got like a, some URNs. So URN is the unique ID of each school. So if I want to create a measure, so if, if I want to count how many schools are there, I can create a measure on this. So obviously I want to measure for that one. So I can click anywhere over here, right click and create a new measure. And if I name that URN count, if I don't already have that, And, and so the, the language I'm using here is DAX. So if you're familiar with Power Pivot, so the same language, the same language we use to create measures in the Power Pivot, this is the same language. So this is definitely nothing new for Excel users. So there you go. I created a, my new measure here, which is like a URN count. Obviously, I already had one. and. And if there is any other other measures that I want to create, that I can create. But if you're someone who is not familiar with DAX, or you are you're someone familiar with DAX, but uh, not very efficient in it, or if you feel that way, or if you're not exactly not sure what kind of measure you want to create, so you can you can basically, for example, if I want to, on URN, if I want to create a new measure, I can, go to quick measures this is an again a new functionality added to power bi so this is like a, one of my favorite functionality in recent times so i can click on quick measures and i can select the calculation so at the moment these are the only calculations available but trust me by next month you will have plenty more in the next release so by looking here if i want to create the calculation or average by category so I can add URN count here, and for the category, I could probably local authority. So this is not a, a great measure, but I just want to show you how the quick measures work. So there you go. Once you, once you add your base value and the category, because that's what you chose here, you can click OK, and this creates the data, creates the measure for me with the, within with the DAX in it. So what it, this enables, this by you, I can look at it, I can understand how it works, and I can learn DAX from it, and it's so easy. I don't actually know, I don't need to know DAX to actually create these kind of measures. So I don't need that measure, so let me delete that one so it doesn't confuse me later. So this is how you can you can use this window to create different measures. So once you once you you created your measures, once you're happy with all the things that you wanted in your in your 
report, then you can go to the, your report view. So one thing that I wanted to mention here is you don't have to create measures in the in the data view, you can create measures here as well, but obviously I, I kind of somehow like creating measures in my data view because I want to create my measures by looking at my data, so that explains exactly what kind of measures I should be doing. So again, I, there's something that I wanted to mention is if I want to hide something from the users, you can click and hide, and if you want to see the hidden things, you can click on this view hidden and you can see that. We'll, we'll look into that in a bit more detail in a bit. So there you go, we, I imported my data into Power BI, I have my data here, my fields available here, so I have my blank canvas in front of me, so let's see how we can create a quick report. So to create a quick report, what I want to do is, my boss wants to slice and dice data, so let's get the local authority, wherever there is, there you go, or actually let's get, let's remove local authority. Let's get to region. So region. So by region, I want to uh, I want to slice my data with region. So let's change that into a slicer, and then I want to add local authority. I also want to slice my local authority based from the region. So that if I choose London, and from here if I probably choose Barking and Dagenham, and then. I want to see all the postcodes in a map. So click on the canvas on there and click the postcode. So this automatically chose the map. Why? Because if you have any geographical data and available in your data set, you can click on that attribute or that field. You can go to you can go to modeling window and change the data category. So if you change the data category, to the right category because I have postcode, that's why I chose postcode. Then it automatically it adds the little earth shape next to it. So basically it explaining the geographical information. So if I look at if I go back to my data again, if I look at my offset region and the region, they both have the same value. Go back to my report. If I add region, let me remove the filter. It gives me it gives me the region, but if uh, I Prati, add, Prati, sorry, could it, yeah, could you go over the slicing again? Yeah, sure. There's somebody asking. Oh yeah, sure. So let me remove this so that. So. So just to go over the slicing again. So to add the slicer, so you can you can choose the whatever the. So there are two ways that you can add the slicer. So for example, if I want to add a slicer for region, let me add another region here. So I I can click on it. So based on the data type of your field, Power BI automatically suggests you a a visualization because my region is a string values that's why it chose this one but if I choose count it automatically gives me a chart so to change my region to slicer I selected that visual and I clicked on the slicer visual so when I click on this it automatically changes it to a slicer type so that that's how you can change the you can add a slicer or you can just click the slicer it it adds this empty visual and then you can choose whatever the whatever the call, uh, field you want in to be there. And at a time you can just add only one field into the slicer. So that's how you can add the slicer. I hope you answered your question. So let's go back to the report. So that the one thing I wanted to show you is the how the data type, data category affects. So when I add region, it added as, a, as text. But when I add offset region, it automatically choosing the map because I chose Ofsted region, I changed Ofsted region data category to country to region. I think we lost your uh, voice uh, command, uh, Pathy.
can you hear me, folks? Okay, uh, Prathya, it seems it's uh, on your end. Ah, the... oh, there you are. Uh, we lost your uh, audio. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, really? Can you hear us? No. You can hear, we can hear you now. All right, cool. Sorry. Sorry about that. So what we have here is I already created this report by, because we don't have much time and I want to show you some other cool features of the get and transform. So what I did here is, so this is type of slicer you just saw in this window, but if you want to change this slicer to a drop down, you can click here and change it to a drop down. But if you want to change this slicer to a so this is a vertical orientation, but if you want to change this into horizontal orientation, which I really like, you can go to general and to change the orientation to horizontal. And this gives you a really nice view to slice and dice the data based upon the data items. So in the school stats, what I did is I changed my slicer to horizontal and added a map and I added the slicer again another slicer based on this. So the one important fact uh, that I would really want to mention is, so Power BI enables this cross filtering. So for example, if you click on the east of England, it, it filters all it filters all the regions underneath, underneath like all the parliamentary constituents or the local authorities underneath. Or if I choose East Midlands, it, or it changed that information. So what's happening here is you can change which visual to cross filter which visual. To do that, you could go to format and edit interactions. So when I click on this, you can see filter or no filter option. So if I click on this, it filters only this one and this one and this one. So if I don't want to filter, the, filter that, I can choose this one. So it doesn't filter that. Again, I, in the same way, I can click on any visual and choose which visuals I want, it to, want, I want it to be interacted when I click on this particular slice visual. So when I click on this, I don't want it to be interact on any of my top level uh, slices or this one. Just wanted to interact my map and this, this card I created. So that's, that's how you can, in, you can maintain the interaction between the visuals in the Power BI or in the report. So one cool thing that I did here that I, I want to mention is these cards. So when I click on something, if I don't have this card, for example, let's make this big. You can still see that. Oh. Well, let's pretend that we don't have those cards there. So if you don't have those cards, it and if I look at Ashfield, and I can see these these are the schools that were in Ashfield. Each point shows me the school. And if I want to add, actually, because I don't understand the school name, so I can add school name to tooltip. And when I hover over the point, I can see this is Orchard Primary School and Nursery, and it's outstanding. That's the postcode of that school. So I can understand how many of them are there, but I don't understand how many schools are there which has the, like basically how many total schools are there in Ashfield, how many total schools are there in East Midland. So if I want, I can, I can just add to account here and change that into a card. Let's resize it Oops. and put it here somewhere. But this doesn't explain to me exactly which visual is what. I can add title or something. If I want it to be really nice and dynamic, I can create measures. So what I did here is I created a measure called title PC. So what, what's happening in this measure? Let's have a look. So what I'm doing is in the measure, in the DAX, in the measures, you can, act, you can return strings. So I added a bit of string here saying total number of schools in. And it automatically, based on my selection, it chooses the, the location, whatever I've given there, and it adds the count measure. So whenever I choose, whenever I slice my data, it dynamically changes the value in that, in that one. The same way, this is based on the regions. So when I click on London, it gives me all the schools in London. 
but again i want to have like a bit more functionality i want to have i want to see how many of them are outstanding and things like that so i can add probably i want to add it with a another visual so this is another way you can add your visual so probably if you want to arrange it first and then what i want to do is based on the rating and also i want to get count so if i click on london it's not showing anything because of the edit interactions so what i want to do is when i click on this i don't want this to interact my no, i have to probably choose this so there you go so when i click on a school i get I, I get exactly how many of of good schools are there how many outstanding schools are there how many schools are needs improvement but i don't want my this one to interact with any other visuals so i can i just choose that visual and just click on none and once i'm happy i just disable that so there you go so when i go to when i click on button i can see how many good schools are there and then i click on london and probably parking i can see how many good schools are there 26 good schools or three needs improvement and things like that. so there is it's nothing limited to that there are so many other visualizations that you can do so instead of map i just added a chart here and here i added a tree map Oh, there is uh, something else that you. So not only the visualizations which are which comes with the Power BI, there are plenty of custom visualizations available out there. So, so this is the visualization gallery which is uh, out there where you have so many visualizations. You can click on a visual and download it onto your, your laptop. But this is going to be moved to Office Store from on the May thirty first. So this is where you will find all the visuals it's they're already there but I somehow like visuals gallery library than this one but that's just my personal preference but um, so you can just go there and you can click on on a visualization and it enables you to add to the Power BI so let's quickly have a look at how to add the custom visualization so if you see this little ellipse over here you can click on that and you can import the custom visuals into your visualizations gallery so what I did is I imported a custom visual called starts this is one of my favorite visual available so what I did is uh, for this custom visuals I need minimum star and minimum value maximum value you and the value so I don't actually have none of these three measures available in my in my original data source so what I did is let's see I hid in those I created three measures one is head star basically my my overall effectiveness value is actually one means it's it's like a the best but if I put one here the visual doesn't get filled up so I created a a column a, a calculated column kind of a new column and with the with an if condition explaining like you know changing the values to if it is one then change the value to four and then I created a minimum value and the maximum value so there's three measures I'm going to use those three measures only for this visual purpose apart from that I don't need them anywhere else so that's why I hidden them so that it never confuses the users so there you go that they are hidden so this is another visual, uh, another report. Basically, I can choose different schools, and based on the school, I get the, for example, Battersea. And then in Battersea, if I want to look at the Vicks Primary School, so this has inadequate rating. And in the overall schools in that area, in this in this local authority, these are the overall schools available. And this explains like uh, how many school good schools are there and how many of them like so it, it 
it looks like a Honeywell Junior School is good. So if that is what I'm interested to look at, so I can go to Honeywell Junior School. And there you go. It has four, five stars, you know, the values for. So that's that's another visual and there is or another report and there is like if you want you can create much more so what I'm doing here is um, it's the same slices but here I have tree map is it actually called tree map yeah so I have like a I created like a drill down functionality here so for example what I'm good here so let's move up so this is where I have all my local authorities. So if I want to look at Honslow, and in Honslow, these are the two parliament uh, constituency. And then if I want to look in the Brentford, these are the all the schools available in Brentford. And if I just want to look at some schools values, so based on total number of pupils, the size of the tree map is based on total number of pupils. So these are, if I click on each school, I, I get the information related to that school. And if I don't want to, if I want all the, all the schools in that local authority, so there you go, I have all the schools with a bit more information. So based on your requirement, you can create your reports. And all these reports, you can create them very quickly. Okay. So once you have to with your reports, yeah? Uh, you have got eight so, minutes left, and there are two questions, so. All right, okay. Yeah, I will public. Uh, I will quickly cover this in yeah. like five minutes, uh, three minutes probably. <laughs> so once we're happy with this one, then uh, we can click on publish, which publish this information into into web portal. So once it's published to web portal, this is where you can see all the information. So you are here. You got. I've got my demos, and in my demos, I can. I already created a dashboard. I'm not going to show you how I created a dashboard now because there's something I really want to show. You. So this is where you can create the dashboard. So, for example, if you want to add an image or something, you can just you can just click here, and you can choose the image. And once you click on the next, you can just place the URL. For example, what I did is I just went I went to Ofsted. I copied the image URL, copy link address, and I placed it in here, and then it automatically brings the image to my dashboard. So this is pretty cool that you can do in the in the Power BI. So obviously we did click into our our schools database, but quickly let's have a quick look at the our OSCOS information as well, because that's where actual complex stuff is, and I was not paying attention to time. So this is where the OSCOS data is. So quickly have a quick look at the, the queries. So in Power BI, in the in here, it's not only you can import data from like a, a CSV, you can do much more complex stuff. You can create functions and many other things. I will leave resources at the end which where you can find more information about how to do this bit. But um, I would quickly want to show you a few things. So if I want if you want to bring data not from a not from a file so this is something which is where i'm getting data from a csv file but if i want to get data from a web page so look at this so basically what i am doing is when i add a new query i add a new query and i choose web this is and i add i give the web url here then once it go to the web url i can choose the different tables in the web url and I can import all the data from there. So there you go. This, this is the data which gives me all the OSCOR winners from 2010 to 2016. It, it's not limited over there. You can create, you can call APIs. So what I'm doing here in Mojo is actually not Mojo. Get movie information. So when I go to my get movie information and in advanced editor, so as you can see, I am using web contents. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually calling web. So this is actually an API. So this I'm using a free API. So that's why I don't have the API key there. But if you want, you can add your API key and you can pull your data back there. So what I did here in OSCOS, if I quickly have a quick look at it. So I imported data into like a a raw column where it have I have all the data in one single column but I duplicated column and then I split the columns by position and somehow I managed to get the year out of it 
I fill you, you can do the fill down so for example here I added year in the first and then by going transform I can fill the values so I fill down I filtered rows and I expanded new columns I even I can merge data with the different tables so if I click on this there you go but based on the best picture and our type I merged columns to the different tables based on my data set and let me see where I am calling the function so I called two functions here so one is to this function is based on the movie name it's going to IMDB API bringing all the information related to that movie so at the moment I do I have only my movie name I don't have any other information but once I call the API I got all the information related to my movie like a runtime general director a plot everything pretty much everything that's related and then based on the IMDB IMDB ID I called box office I called box office API and I even got how, what was the budget what was the gross income how much they got the income for the rental informations and things like that so what I'm trying to say is this is not this is very rich and you can create stunning things very quickly so let me quickly show you one visual that I um, always which I always like so let's create a Uh, title if I can see title yeah title Oops. add a title and let's change title to a filter and then I want to add a custom visual called image and I want to put poster so because this poster is a URL uh, that I don't know I uh, that I know so I go to modeling I change the data category to image URL add the poster to it and when I click on any movie I get the poster back so so if you have a different categories and if you have different uh, based on your data type if you choose the right category you can create really stunning visuals in the I really don't want any of oh, that is good place to end so yeah, as good as, as it gets, this is something I've not prepared, but uh, yeah. So you can have, you can create really nice visualizations and you can create your dashboards really quickly. So as I said, I have some more data so sources added to my slides. I thought I will have a go around the slides, uh, but um, considering the time, you don't have much time so I'm going to I added those slides and uh, I will probably write a blog post about uh, about the demo and where you can find all the information related to slides but there is there is one place that you really want to look into for the resources follow guy in the cube or watch Will Thompson's uh, and or Microsoft people edX program about learning for BI or if you're into power into power query or M follow Chris Webb blog or if you're into DAX go for SQL BI or if you are looking for some Power BI tips go for Power BI tips and if you're just excited about what's happening around the world in the Power BI then just follow Twitter so these are my details if you have any questions please feel free to contact me and I'm more than happy to respond back and yes. it's all yours now yeah <laughs> um, you. sorry we're running out of time to answer your questions people but I'm copied all the questions and I'll email them to Prati so she will answer them uh, in a blog post uh, shortly when she has time yeah sure <laughs> um, and that's we round the hour now so thank you very much for attending everyone as I said the uh, webinar has been recorded and it will be uploaded to YouTube within uh, an hour and uh, Prathi will get all your questions and she will answer them uh, as soon as she can. And thank again, you. Thank, thank you, Prathi.